So in the last session, we talked a little bit about the impact of shutting down facilitation from the south and the effective uh, disruption uh, that we executed and the debilitating effect that it had on the enemy as we went into the spring of 2011. The enemy is now short fighters, they're short of weapons, and they're disorganized. And I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, Marja specifically because there is always the question of how did the Marines turn Marja? First and foremost, I'll tell you that there was a great deal, obviously, of uh, sacrifice in Marja. Uh, heavy combat, uh, hard fought gains. But even after all that, there was still some uh, doubt until the Marines gained the trust and confidence of the people. And there are lots of reasons that we were able to gain that uh, trust and confidence. One of the biggest is treating uh, the population with respect, uh, respecting their culture. But another uh, big reason was because the people realized that the Marines were there to protect them from the Taliban and that we weren't going to indiscriminately uh, use force. Uh, one of the examples from uh, 2nd Battalion, uh, 6 Marines, commanded by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Ellison, uh, they had a firefight uh, down in the blocks with the Taliban trying to entice the Marines to engage with local uh, civilians uh, in between. And in fact, the Marines uh, held fast. Uh, they didn't engage. They didn't endanger uh, the population. They protected the population, and then they pursued the Taliban uh, later. And frankly, the word got out, and the people realized that the Marines weren't there to harm them. They were there to rid Marja of the Taliban, and they were there to protect the uh, population. Once they realized this, we gained their trust and confidence, and then they committed uh, to a security. And they committed, quite frankly, in earnest to helping us provide their security and in some cases uh, showed a willingness uh, to provide for their own security. And when General Petraeus, uh, Kam Isaf, gave the Marines permission to uh, train uh, local police uh, on our own, uh, we were able to enfranchise a great deal of the population uh, in Marja. Now we had experience with uh, local security forces from Iraq. We, we understood the, the pitfalls associated with hiring locals to provide for their own security. So we made sure in this case uh, that we got it right. And uh, the local police were immediately tied to the uniform police. The local police were vetted prior to their uh, participation required uh, shures and agreements uh, from the elders. They were integrated into the overall security plan, working side by side, not just with our forces, but also with the uh, ANSF. And most importantly, once they were vetted and once they were participating, is the fact that they knew the enemy. And we found out through reporting uh, that they were a huge threat. Uh, to the enemy because the enemy realized now that they had locals who knew them, who knew the area, who were actively participating against the insurgency. They became targets uh, for the insurgency, uh, but they stood their ground. And today, as Marja is in the first phase of transition, uh, these security forces, these same Afghan local police, are playing a key role. Uh, I don't put a lot of stock in uh, statistics, but if you look at statistics in Marja, you get a feel for the change from 2010 to uh, 2011. From uh, October to December of 2010, there were 54 of what we would classify as significant events within three kilometers of the Marja District Center. And then during that same three month period in 11, October to December of 2011, there were five. And if you look at that same three-month period within five kilometers of the district center, there were 233 events in 2010 compared to eight events in 2011. So I think in this case, statistics are a little bit uh, telling. Overall in Marja, 
this year there were uh, 176 significant events. Last year that figure was up above uh, 900. So today, almost exactly two years from the date our forces entered Marja, Marja is in the first phase of uh, transition. And they entered that transition in uh, December of uh, 11. They held another round of elections earlier in 2011. The district government is up and functioning. There's 600 uh, Afghan local police operating side by side with the uh, Afghan National Civil Order Police, the Afghan Uniform Police, the Afghan Army. Uh, most people in the United States haven't heard anything about Marja for months. And uh, we think that the Afghan National Security Forces will be able to keep it that way.